TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Turkey calls on the Muslim world to stand with Lebanon against Israel. The Israeli Parliament Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee Chairman Yuli Edelstein cast doubt over prospects of diplomacy vis-à-vis -vis Hezbollah yielding fruit. The Israeli Defense Ministry of Gallant stresses to U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin that the chief threat to regional stability is the Islamic Republic of Iran. Turkey calls on the Muslim world to stand against Israel in relation to the rising prospects of hostilities which were instigated by the Lebanese-Iranian proxy Hezbollah, turning into an all-out conflagration. Speaking to his ruling AK party, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan emphasized that the Islamic nations in the region must stand in solidarity with Lebanon. Gazi yakıp yıkan İsrail'in it is understood that Israel, which has burned Gaza to the ground, has set its sights on Lebanon now. I am saying this clearly, Netanyahu's plan to spread the war to the region with the consent of the West will lead to catastrophe. The Islamic world and brotherly countries in the Middle East need to react to this bloody plan before the West. We should not provide an opportunity for this. Turkey is with the brotherly people of Lebanon and its state. I invite the other countries in the region to stand in solidarity with Lebanon. In contrast to the claim voiced by Turkey's head of state, Israel is not itching for war with Lebanon. Nevertheless, in light of an unsustainable reality in which over 5,300 rockets, missiles and one-way unmanned aerial vehicles were launched toward Israel since Hezbollah launched its first aggression on October 8th of 2023, Chairman of Israel's Parliamentary Committee for Foreign Affairs and Defense, Member of Parliament Yuli Edelstein, acknowledged that every passing day draws Israel nearer to launching a full-scale attack against Hezbollah in Lebanon. If you would have interviewed me two, three months ago, I would have said that in contrast to popular belief, we may have had a chance to reach some type of arrangement through French pressure, or via that Amos Hochstein, or whatever it is, and that we could attain some cessation of hostilities and distance Hezbollah to the necessary distance from the border, etc. However, I believe that every day that passes diminishes this chance. The escalation is already visible. You don't need to be a great military expert to identify identify this. I visited the North a couple of days ago. I toured together with local residents and regional council heads, as well as the IDF. Look, the attitude is not that everyone will return tomorrow if some document is formulated. Therefore, I think that at some point we will have to culminate our operations in the South, because we naturally won't hold offensives on both fronts. We will make ourselves available for an operation against Hezbollah and against all those who do not allow us to return our residents to their homes, because a normal state can't afford living in these circumstances of displaced people for an extended duration. Edelstein was further asked to address evident tensions between the Netanyahu government in Jerusalem and the Biden administration in Washington. I think that there are two points that are very important to note. The first related to direct support for the State of Israel, our needs munitions that to my deep regret were made public, and it is too bad that it happened. The second, which is no less important and to my mind we have not done enough work in this regard in recent years, is to show that in the multipolar world which is increasingly put on display, there are no longer illusions that we can dance in two weddings. We must unequivocally to be in the camp of the good. I'm not afraid to term it just as it is. We face an axis with different interests and priorities. Russia, for instance, has no urgency to destroy Israel, nor does it have any interest to do so. However, they have urgency vis-a-vis -vis the war in Ukraine. Iran really doesn't care about Ukraine and all that relates to it. 
It is keen on destroying the Zionist entity and are working determinedly to achieve it. However, this axis will always help one another, as we can see. To my regret, on the other side of the equation, each nation has its own theories. You could see it in Congress, where half of the representatives wanted to help Israel while it didn't want to support Ukraine, and the other half exactly the opposite. I think, if you ask me about the most important policy is to work as much as possible to forge unity with the good camp and not the axis of evil and to ensure that the state of Israel unequivocally, even if there are tactical costs attached to it, stands firm in the heart of the good camp. Last week, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu released a televised statement in which he urged the Biden administration to stand by its commitment to ensure that Israel receives shipments of munitions which Congress had approved in legislation. While the Biden administration initially cited only one shipment that was withheld for review, it later became clear that the reason for Netanyahu's refer to delays were related to a decision not to expedite the bureaucratic processes necessary to ensure a steady stream of munitions during times of war. And while the revelation ratcheted up pressure on administration officials to rectify the slowdown, Edelstein insinuated that the slowdown of support may have emanated out of political considerations. We face a complication situation. Election years takes its toll. Politicians also exist in the United States, and politicians during election year have a hard time to see matters that take place thousands of kilometers from their country, particularly when what lies in the balance is whether they, their party, their administration, will continue to reign. However, we must preserve dialogue in every possible way. As you had insinuated, I know the contents of those meetings, and we of course relay wishes for success to the defense minister and his soon to be culminating trip and meetings there in the United States. Meanwhile in Washington, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant held a long list of meetings with U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan this evening, as well as with his American counterpart, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, during the course of which, Jerusalem's top defense official emphasized the importance of cultivating the relations between the State of Israel and the United States of America. Above all, we must discuss our extraordinary ties, projecting power together, discussing areas of disagreement as friends do, and standing strong together in the face of attacks, from missile attacks, to diplomatic attacks on the global arena. Our friends and our enemies see this room and understand our power. Defense Minister Gallant went on to address the separate challenges facing Israel, chief most, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Today we are at the crossroad and that will impact the entire Middle East. I am here to discuss the ways to achieve our common goals. Uh, ensuring the security of the State of Israel and projecting the powerful ties between our countries. In Gaza, we must work together to ensure the return of 120 hostages, with no exception. We must end the terrorist regime of Hamas. In the north, we are determined to establish security, changing reality on the ground, and bringing our communities safely back home. We are working closely together to achieve an agreement, but we must also discuss readiness for every possible scenario. The greatest threat to, to the future of the world and the future of our region is Iran and time is running out. Now is, now is the time to realize the commitment of the American administrations over the years to promise to prevent Iran from possessing nuclear weapon. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, for his part, 
predominantly focused his remarks and subsequent discussion on the need to de-escalate hostilities along the Lebanon-Israel border. Hezbollah's provocations threaten to drive the Israeli and Lebanese people into a war that they do not want. And such a war would be, would be a catastrophe for Lebanon, and it would be devastating for innocent Israeli and Lebanese civilians. And so diplomacy is by far the best way to prevent more escalation. So we were urgently seeking a diplomatic agreement that restores lasting calm to Israel's northern border and enables civilians to return safely to their homes on both sides of the Israel-Lebanon border. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. It is important to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation-based non-profit ministry with all of our productions available free of charge. Therefore, we deeply appreciate it. If you consider making a donation, you can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, I'd like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we will see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.